Fight Gamer Nate 78 coming at you live and at large with guns. Shots fired! Oh, God. I got something for you, hip hop. Oh, God. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. Now the guy who looks like a thumbprint. <laughs> 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 You're, it's your turn next. All right. Jamie Butterworth, you see me lurking and commenting on everything. I do a lot of writing, I don't do so much talking. But I'm here. My intro ain't quite as interesting as uh, Nate's over there. Not, not to mention, he's hoarding all the syrup. Yep, all of it. <laughs> all right, now up next we got uh we got Deadpool's uh, illegitimate child. <laughs> hey, 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 how's everybody doing, man? It's uh baby Deadpool. Um, just wanted to get some chimichangas. I was promised chimichangas. Where are my chimichangas? <laughs> In other words, that's Jay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how's everybody doing this evening? And of course, myself, yours truly, Quan Manchu. How y'all doing? How's it going? And one more thing, uh, I uh, moonlight as the Winamp guy. Winamp, it really kicks the lava's ass. <laughs> <laughs> then we got our man over here, the man of the hour, the one with the power. It's the smoothest cat over here on YouTube. Introduce yourself. You guys know who it is. It's Nintendo, the Zen Gamer, the one and only, joining my good friends here on their podcast. Uh, first time doing this sort of thing, so, you know, be gentle. <laughs> oh, no, he, he's lying, guys. He likes it rough. <laughs> Y'all, camera turn on. <laughs> All right, so, Zen, you can start us off and see what we can start with. What's your question for this evening for us? And let's see if we can bounce back and forth some ideas based on it. And there we go. All right, well, let's do this thing. Okay, so what do you guys think about... Uh, the comments made by this guy, this Halo dev, David Ellis, who works at 343, about Kojima's uh, comments on the uh, design type of the characters in Metal Gear Solid 5. He said that uh, they are disgusting. He went on to say the industry is full of man babies. Uh, you know, I personally disagree with it, just because the character is erotic or sexy, so to speak. But, I say uh, send him a copy, a gift copy of B Got to HK, Blu-ray edition, and a copy of Dead or Alive and lock him inside a house for about a couple of weeks, you know, with some Cheetos and some Red Bull. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, honestly, it's a double standard. I mean, this guy works at... Three, four, three industries. You've got Cortana. Everybody knows who she is. She's been in the Halo series from the very beginning. And she's basically a naked computer chick. Right? They even made her even sexier for Halo 4. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but here you are, criticizing another man's uh, work, so to speak. And really and truly, you're wrong for doing it. So, you know, what do you guys think? Pot kettle. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. That's me. What about you, Jay? What do you think of this whole situation? Well, um, I, since I played Halo 4, I think dude is actually, like, hilariously funny because there were parts in that game where I thought I needed to give Master Chief and Cortana a couple of minutes, you know, so he can go handle the biz and <laughs> then I can get back to playing. Oh, so good Lord. For him saying that, <laughs> I just laugh because I'm like, yo chick is butt naked. <laughs> That's the way he likes them. I mean, it's being real. <laughs> oh, Lord. Hey, fingerprint, what about you, man? What you think? <laughs> hey, Jamie, what you think, man? I actually have quite a bit to say on this one, but uh, just bear with me as, my, as I make my point here. First of all, the, guy, the Halo dev, he's hypocritical as hell. He has no right to say what he said about Kojima ba based on his, you know, past. But when it comes to, you know, sexually designed characters like, like Quiet from Metal Gear Solid Five. I mean, to me, a lot of times, when it comes down to sexy designed characters, there has to be a point to it. There has to be a reason why she's designed like she is. I mean, sure, it's fun to watch Dead or Alive Beach Volleyball, but come on. I mean, 
I don't need that in a stealth game. But then again, I see, on, I, I see on Reddit where you know they're theorizing that the reason she is dressed like the way she is is because she can actually use her skin as camouflage. Then her design makes sense. But it has to be for me. From a design perspective, it needs to actually make sense. Not just for the hell of it. I don't care about digital chicks. It doesn't matter to me. I like real women. All right. Oh, uh, uh, Romaine Stamos and X Men. I mean, I'm sorry, I was lost in thought here. You said camouflage <laughs> and nakedness, so yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what the heck? Okay, the Monopoly guy's next. <laughs> you want your opinion on this too? And don't listen. Don't pass go and don't collect two hundred dollars. And one more thing. Give me back that money from free parking, you cheater. <laughs> I do say, good sir, I do believe that this man is in good, good need of a cup check. Because, quite <laughs> frankly, anybody that would have to sit there and cry about sexy women in a video game might have serious sexual issues. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Peanut. <laughs> that, my friends... <laughs> is the start of what I think about it. Quite frankly, uh, I don't want to look at a butt ugly woman in a video game. I mean, I don't see what the big deal is. And if if he felt like this, it must have been hell when they were making Halo Four. He's probably banging on the walls. Uh, I think he was banging something else. <laughs> oh. Well, the thing is, you, you can have you can have sexy and you can have practical. I mean, if you're take for example, there's a picture going around from from the uh, MMO Rift, where a female character has you know no armor on and she's you know decently clothed, and then she puts high level armor on and she's wearing almost nothing. There needs to be a limit. There needs to be a reason. It needs to be practical. Yes, I love sexy game characters. It's great to stare at one for you know 40, 50 hours, however long, but it needs to be within reason. I agree. I agree. You know, but the, here's the thing. Yeah, right. Having tastefully closed characters does make sense because if you recall in Twilight Princess, did you take a look at real mode Midna? Oh boy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay then. I forgot about that. Oh, it's kind of difficult to you know forget. Oh, hold on. We've got a surprise guest coming in. Give me a second. Can I say a little more real quick? Go for it, man. And one more thing. <laughs> hey, Jamie. Uh, <laughs> Jamie, I, I just got I got a rebuttal just a little bit. We're talking about video games. Right. Okay. Last time I checked, video games are based in fantasy, not reality. They don't follow the same rules as reality. So why do we care if it's scantily clad with heavy armor? Well, the reason that we care is because, you know, we're trying to draw more people to this hobby. And, I mean, if you're, if you're working on scantily clad women like that for no reason, I mean, it's going to actually push away a big portion of the audience, particularly the female audience. I mean, you've got to realize, that as far as my history is concerned, I was raised by four women. I've been around women my entire life that have meant a lot to me. And just Lucky knowing them and speaking to plenty of other women, I mean, it's just it's, it's a thing where there needs to be a reason behind their, their actual appearance like that. Let me tell you something, you must have been spoiled to death, man, because that's one thing, man. If you got raised around your dad, trust me, dads can be jerks. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. I'm aware of that. I'm aware hey, of that. hey, what's up, man? You a little bit late. How you doing? He's rocking on shades. How you doing? Ah, oh, chilling. You know me. You know how I do. You know how I get down. <laughs> well, introduce yourself. You got a late to the group, but hey, better late than never, man. Yeah, this is uh, Tobias Shadow Fox, so you probably... Some people may have seen me on the channels here and there. I, I normally lurk there. Don't haven't really done any videos. Um, I actually uh, write for Pure Video Games on net. Haven't really done too much stuff lately because I've been doing a lot of stuff for work um, for the military, information technology, and things like that. So um, just been around all over IGN and things like that. I'm probably you may have heard of a. A post on a forum on G4 a long time ago. I'm the, actually the person that did the infamous GameCube versus Xbox post. Um, oh, nice! With, the, with all the the Star Wars stuff and all that, including all the shaders and everything. And I was the person that kind of calculated everything down to where everybody found out towards the end of the generation it was pretty much a wash between GameCube and Xbox when it came to performance. Uh, when you dialed it down to uh, pretty much the specs, polygons, things of that nature. So. 
Um, I just kind of pointed that out uh, toward the, the beginning of the generation, just looking at everything that was there on paper and uh, some of the things that was out. And a lot of people were saying that GameCube can do these things the Xbox was doing when clearly there were examples and things like that. So I just kind of pointed those out, and a lot of people kind of uh, shared that thread. Um, so you may, I mean, pretty much you just do GameCube versus Xbox thread on, on Google right now. You'll probably find it. It'll, it'll be, it may be a couple pages back now, but it was always a top hit a couple uh, a couple months to a year ago. So cool. Um, I'm that infamous guy, unfortunately. Oh, one more thing. Uh, Zendo had a question for us, and uh, you get to answer it as well. And yeah, Zendo, post your question, and then we can go on to the next one. Okay, uh, what do you think about David Ellis's thoughts or remarks about Kojima wanting to make Metal Gear Solid characters more sexy and more unique? He <laughs> said they were uh, disgusting. He said that the industry is full of man babies, and he really doesn't think that characters should be portrayed as such. What are your thoughts? Um, well, there's there's really a duality with that because sexism, unfortunately, is, is part of how the industry works. Um, I, and it's not, it's not necessarily one-sided either because well, there's a whole bunch of real beefed up dudes in games also. So right, yes. Yeah, I mean it's just pretty that's pretty much just par for the course um at this point. Um do I see something wrong with it? I can see how people can be offended to it, but being a you know, a veteran of the industry since the beginning, I, I really you know, since Custer's Revenge, I mean it's just been it's just been offensive thing after offensive thing. It's, it's just Oh, there's a classic Custer's Revenge, the most one of the most okay. infamous games from the twenty six hundreds. Yep. Oh God, dude, that's almost as bad as uh, you know, chase the chuck wagon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> that's yeah. pretty bad. Not ET bad, but still bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Kojima, you know, he he's gonna say what he's gonna say, and I, the way I the way I see it is, you know, it's just the way it's just history. That's the way things have been. Um. So Tobias, what did you say you work in? Um, I do information technology for the government, information oh, management okay. and information systems, things like that. So server racks, planning, all those kind of things. Well, I wanted to touch real quick on something you said about uh, you know, GameCube versus uh, Xbox. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody can do a perfect test about whether the GameCube was a superior system or not. Just look at Resident Evil 4 Pretty mm. much. versus PlayStation 2. PlayStation 2 was muddied, didn't have as much textures, textures were washed out. Even the cut scenes, uh, because they had to do cut scenes, looked worse than what the real-time rendered scene was on the GameCube. So That's true. I, I, I kind of hated on the PS2 Xbox version, though, because they had all the, uh, all the extras that didn't show up until you got the Wii version. So, um, yeah, it was clearly there, and, and I believe there was an interview at some point in time right after that game came out that said the Xbox couldn't do it. It was something uh, something with regards to the main memory and how it, it I guess basically how the Xbox had, had to use part of that main memory to do a Z buffer, where on, it was for free on GameCube because it was part of the embedded embedded drown. Mm -hmm. So that was part of a thing that they said they couldn't do. And I don't, I forget what that interview was. I have to look at it, so I don't, I don't want to lie to you now, but there was definitely um, some talk about it. Like, they actually tried it at some point, but it, it wasn't a go. So they went ahead and did what they could to chop it down and fit it on PS2. All right. Well, now, we're going to get back to this on another time, though, because this seems like a very intriguing topic. Maybe for the next podcast, we could have that added for the after party for the wonderful 101 release. What do you guys <laughs> think of that one? Definitely, we could, re we could really revisit this topic. But now, we're going to go on to another one, and it's going to be mine. And my topic is simple. Do you think the time for a third-party large development studios has come <coughs> to a pass? Or do you think that uh, third-party large studios are here to stay? Now, I'm going to give you my take before we go even further, and we're going to pass it along to Jay afterward. My take is this. With bloated budgets... Okay, being pushed on graphics, effects, etc., and whatnot, undercutting advertising, undercutting scripting, undercutting game design, and analyzing of systems to make sure that there's a functionality with that game design as far as like how you implement game mechanics, controls, etc., and whatnot. 
that the time for these big studios and their bloated budgets are slowly coming to an end. We're going to see a return of the smaller studio. This is why I see a lot of people embracing indie. And what's going to end up happening, in my opinion, is you're going to see a scaling back of the scope of projects in order to sit up here and focus on a more of a quality than the Michael Bayish type of productions that you see with minimal plot. All right. Uh, up next, uh, what do you think about that, uh, Jay? And somebody invite uh, Tobias back because I think he dropped. Well, actually, I, I I agree with you, and at the same time, I don't think I think they're gonna they're gonna have to either restructure. I don't think they're gonna go away completely because the only way I see them going away completely is if, like, say for instance, I know um, I read an article where. Um, some of the shareholders for Microsoft had wanted them to get rid of their Xbox division completely. If something like that were to happen, like if something like that were to happen, then yeah, I can see them like seeing that coming to an end. Like the big, the big ones like Activision and EA and um, uh, I forgot what the other one was that I can't stand. But <laughs> I can see that happening. Should like something like that happen, but something very big has to happen for that to for that to take place. But I do think is what's gonna wind up happening is if Microsoft and Sony, if something happens with like the PS4, like say if uh, they have like another issue like the PS3 had with the melting of the HDMI cables when it first came out and had to do that two hundred thousand recall. If like a red ring of death or something like that happens with Microsoft, I think if something bad like that happens within like the first two or three years then yeah, you're gonna see like big companies, big third parties scaling back. They're not gonna have a choice. <laughs> Friction both from thumb pads. Yeah, Sorry. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh man. <laughs> Sorry, nasty cough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thumbprint, you're next. <laughs> thumbprint. Thumbprint. Was that me? Yes, thumbprint. Oh, really? Okay. Just keep watching. <laughs> <laughs> I think the I just turned their camera on. I mean. Oh, okay. I, I turned my on, but for some reason. Hold on. Let me see. Yeah, mine's not working. I guess it likes the picture. Dude, do your picture, man. Get your, get your Tanuki on. I try to. I don't know how to change it in the, uh, in the hangout here. I don't know upper why. Right, upper right, you'll see it right here. Right. Upper right. It says here, turn off and turn on the camera. There you go. We got the Tanuki. Uh, okay. Okay. All right, go ahead, Thumbprint. What's All your right. Name? Anyway, um, I think third part. When it comes to third parties, I mean, we're going to see them, you know, diminish over time. Um, it's with the ballooning cost of development for the new systems. I mean, it's not going to be a lot of a lot of developers that can actually support that. It might come down to a point where the only main scale developers we have are going to be Ubisoft and Activision and EA, and everything else is just going to be swallowed up by them. I think the next victims of this. Are gonna be Squaresoft. I have no doubt Squaresoft is gonna have to go bankrupt at some point and be picked up by someone else. I mean, it's just unfortunately big third-party developers are gonna start coming to a close until we only have a few left. That's gonna be bad because you know, like I said, lack of competition breeds complacency, and then Absolutely. you're gonna see poor. Look, I... at, look at Madden, for example. Oh God. No, I don't want to. No, don't make me. <laughs> don't make me. All right. What do you think, Nate? This is what I think. I think third parties such as EA, I think Activision, I think 2K Games, Take-Two, Rockstar, all these major third parties. Like you say, Quan, they're going into this next generation the wrong. They're going as I'm. I'm just going to say it like it is. They're going into it ass backwards. They're wanting to go for the top, and then work the way down. Whereas if they would go at the start at the bottom, meaning start with the Wii U, make the game for the Wii U first, and then once you get it properly and efficiently for the Wii U, then you can up start building it up to the other systems. If they did that, it would cut cost dramatically for them because, number one, Nintendo give their tools, the Unity engine, for free. There's no reason why a game should cost you know, $15, 20 $30 million to make, just like there's no reason to spend $100 million on a controller. That's a different yeah. story. Oh, the point is, look, third, and, and I'm going to say this as if I'm speaking to third party directly. 
Third party, if you want to stay alive, you've got to get your head out of the clouds. Okay? Build your game to be a game first. Graphics aren't everything. Graphics are nice. Eye candy's great, just like scantily clad women in video games can be great sometimes. Uh, the point is, start at the low end and then build your way up. And I know a lot of drones are going to see this and they're going to be like, bah, 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 bah. but the point is, if you start at the lower end and you get it looking the best you can, you then move home. your way up, you have a whole lot less to do on those other two systems to make it even better. Am I right or am I wrong? You're right, sir. All right. Uh, now, here's another question, though. We're going to have another topic come up, and that's going to be from our boy, Jay. What do you want to ask Jay? Hey, man, you put me on spot. I ain't even got a good question yet. Come back to me. No. <laughs> okay, yeah. thumbprint. Go ahead, thumbprint. Show them how it's done. Um... I ain't got anything either. Give me a few minutes. Oh, you suck. Okay. <laughs> Uh-oh, here it comes. We already know what's about to happen. Guys, brace for it. Nate, what do you want to ask? <laughs> I want to say... Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> I want to talk about Hip Hop Gamer real quick. Because I knew it! Quite, it. Frankly, <laughs> quite oh, Lord. frankly, I had a lot of respect for Hip Hop, both as a artist as a commentator, and as a figure in the video game industry. And I had a respect for him because up until evidently today, he never truly seemed like he was a sellout. He talked good about Nintendo. He talked good about Microsoft. He talked good about Sony. He talked good about PC. He was all for gaming, all right? And this is actually going to be a two-part subject because y'all know what I've talked about recently in my videos. Are you a system or are you a gamer? So, hip-hop, I'm going to ask you, are you a system or are you a gamer? Do you buy a system for its specs or do you buy a system for its games? Because your video today was not only a journalist piece of crap and a disgrace to the community, it's absurd. It makes no sense. The Wii U does not have to be a PS4. It does not have to be an Xbox One. It needs to be the Wii U. Just like Sony and Microsoft need to be Sony and Microsoft, but evidently this next gen, they're happy and content of having the exact same system. So, I'm sorry. I appreciate Nintendo for not making a PlayStation 4 or an Xbox One. It's not needed. All right? Nintendo is a... Game developer first. And if Pete Hines and the rest of the third parties can't understand that, then you know what? How did my mom say something this morning? You can just go drag off. Wow. Well, I'm not going to say anything more than look at my video. <laughs> <laughs> you already know where I stand. I'm not going to even sit up here and repeat myself because, yeah. Shameless self-promotion for the win. Uh, <laughs> what do you think, Zendo? Oh, man. You know, it's really crazy. Like I was saying earlier, you know, why do people... It, it, it comes in the form of a question. Why do people always seem to want things to be the same? Why don't they like differences? Why don't they like choices? Nintendo, in my mind, represents a choice. And the other two... They represent similarity. They represent repetition. They represent the exact same thing. I mean, in the seventh generation, they earned the name the HD Twins. It wasn't because the consoles, well, it might have been a little bit because the consoles were uh, similar in specs, similar in performance, but really they were far too similar in what they provided. And that is where, what people are not seeing, what they provide. Now, as far as Mr. Hip Hop, I have yet to see that video. I haven't watched any of his videos for quite some time. There was another video a long time back that really just turned me off the dude entirely. But given that he is still doing it or he's done it again, it comes to me as no surprise. Now, you know, there's really nothing I can say about people like that. I mean, they pander to a certain crowd, and when that crowd refuses to get them further in the industry, further in YouTube or what have you, 
then they pander to another crowd and they completely betray uh, others' expectations of them. And that's exactly what uh, Game and Nate was saying. Quack! <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, quack, 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 Kind of cool how he did that more than just kind of cut the you know cut the cut the BS with him all the time and do straightforward questions and then just leave. Um, but yeah, this this most recent scenario is I, I just can't I can't respect that. Um, I, I'm going to get a lot of flack for this, but uh, I, I'm going to get an Xbox One for one game, for one game only, and you should get a system for games. Granted, the one game that I'm, I'm getting it for is Killer Instinct. And the reason why that is is because Killer Instinct 2 is my favorite game of all time. And I looked at, I, when I first saw Killer Instinct, I was like, oh, God, what did they do to this? I didn't even see Rare's name on it until maybe a week ago. It was all Double Helix until then. They decided to finally stamp their little name on it on the last trailer they just put out when they showed Cinder and some character I don't even recognize yet. Um, but once I, I watched uh, Ken Law basically kick everybody's ass in that game, and I was kind of paying attention to it, and I was looking at it, and it looks like it plays like Killer Instinct. It may look ugly as hell, but it looks like it plays like Killer Instinct, and I want to at least try that. And there's no way that I'm, I'm going to be able to play it on another platform, so I have to have it. It's got to happen. Now, here's um, a question for you, Tobias. What, yes. if you, what if you get it, and you find out that it's just... Not at all what you expected, and to be honest, it's trash. You spent forty dollars for just eight characters and a handful of stages. Well, what in this that? case, it'll be like five hundred and forty dollars. But yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Oh, yeah, I would. I would definitely. I would definitely. I. I have the e crow on that one, and I. All I can do is really hope that I can play something in the future because I do like Halo also. So when. Possibly Halo Five. It's got to come out at some point. Take five hundred and forty. I play that, but and at some point, I probably end up training in the console because you know, I mean, I'm going to get PS4. They're going to play all the same games pretty much, with the exception of maybe Titanfall. From what I understand, that may end up being a time exclusive. So, I mean, Titanfall is coming out to PC exactly the same, or within the same time as uh, it's coming to Xbox One. So literally for me is, is Halo and Killer Instinct. That's it. I mean, there's really nothing else to really discern the difference anymore, unless unless Epic has something exclusive locked up with them that we don't know about yet. Other than that, I don't. There's nothing that I really have that I can really roll with them on anymore. Well, there's a ton there's of always rise. Like <laughs> what, what, what was that, Quan? There's always rise. <laughs> oh no! no. no. I saw uh, I saw some rise multiplayer and it actually looked really badass. I was pretty impressed by the multiplayer on it. Well, I might give it a shot. I mean, come on now. I'm gonna have to get this thing sooner or later if I'm gonna have any type of credibility. I gotta give everything a shot. I'm gonna have to be Mikey and I'm gonna have to eat the life cereal. Okay, seriously. Yeah. Hey, hey, Tobias. Yes. You know, you could do is take that five hundred and forty dollars, probably put another five hundred with it, and just buy you a Killer Instinct two arcade machine. Oh, oh, you know what? I, I've actually been trying to do that at some point. I was actually trying to piece together uh, the boards and the uh, the get a flash card instead of the actual uh, um, the hard drive, and actually build one. Not build the entire chassis, but just a little small box to put it in to plug it to a display. I'm really uh, looking to it. I'm, I'm that. I'm or that you could get the N sixty four and call it a day. <laughs> well, it, 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 there's little differences. I, I have I have the N64 version. I have Killer Instinct Go, and there's little differences there, like uh, the yeah, text things and things. And there's some there's some glitch combos that you can't do. So I mean, I, I really I can't describe how addicted I am to one game. Like I, I, I brother, I'm majority... with you on that. I, I'm a huge Killer Instinct fan myself, but I I just look. I'm just gonna have to say it. After what Microsoft did to Rare for the last seven years, and then they don't even have the decency to let Rare, even though it's not the Rare that we had back whenever Killer Instinct was first made, they don't even have the decency to, to let them get a reach around. 
<laughs> hey, instead of spending a hundred million dollars on a damn controller that'll give you friction burn, they could have spent a hundred million dollars and gave Rare the opportunity to make that game fully instead of sending it to Double Helix, whose track record is crap. Okay, now um, let's get it back to the original question. Jay, what did you think of the hip cop gamer situation? <laughs> Uh, well, um, in, in my personal uh, opinion, um, I have no comment because that, that video was jacked up. <laughs> uh, that, that's just me, you know. Oh, Lord. In other words, refer to my vid. <laughs> yeah. Correct, sir. You know, you know, where the are, you know what, hip-hop, if he wants to do shot fired, I'll just, how about this? How about I just send a nuke right up his ass? Be nice, be nice, be nice, be nice, be nice. Come on now. It's not that kind of party now. I'm sorry. Okay, be nice. All right, then. So who's next up with a question of theirs? Actually, I just thought of one. Go for it. All right. Uh, after what we just talked about, what do you guys think about uh, what innovation truly means? Mm. Does it mean just adding some memory, adding a better uh, vid card, or does it mean like actually making something that's actually different and unique? Dude, I, I went to wait, wait, listen. I went to a about. restaurant once, right? And, and what happened was they put more mashed potatoes on my plate, and that was innovative. <laughs> oh, you like Microsoft potatoes? That, that, they don't, they don't, that, that sounds like a five star restaurant right there. That's what I'm saying, man. Oh my god, dude! Two thumbs up, man. Seriously, that was awesome. That's, That's what I'm asking. Turn you. my camera back on for a sec because Microsoft spent a hundred million dollars on a controller that still has a battery pack, but yet Nintendo made a Pro controller that. Is rechargeable, very light, very responsive, and it's just kind of funny, you know. I mean, did this take a hundred million dollars, and does it give you friction burn? But Nate, Nate, listen, listen, you you, you, you gotta you gotta you, no, you gotta I think approach Nintendo this with the right an afterthought, and they they turned it around pretty quick. You gotta approach this with the right angle, Nate, man. Come on, there's like what, uh, forty or fifty innovations in that controller. There's rumble in the triggers, guy. Oh. <laughs> hey, look, 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 oh look. my God! Really? If it now. doesn't make me a sandwich. I, it's not worth a hundred million dollars. <laughs> here's what you got. Here's what you got to remember, Nate. The battery pack is because they got to recoup some of the losses on the hundred million dollars. Oh yeah, that's right. Because now they have uh, Duracell commercials on the dashboard. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, <they do>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god damn it! Oh man, dude, I'm not on a roller day. I'm on a biscuit. (laughs) You know, hey, hey, you guys are gonna kill me with this one tonight, man. (laughs) I would like to actually truly answer the question you asked there, Quan. Go for it. Uh, what I call innovation is is. And I didn't ask the question, by the way. So be nice. sorry. (laughs) Sorry. Uh. Jay asked the question, right? I got yeah, uh-huh. Because he I finally came up with a question. Anyway, what I call innovation is is being willing to push the boundaries and not conform to a set path that you've already walked for a while. Mm. Now, some people are going to try to turn this 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 statement, what I just said, and say, well, what do you call Mario, 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 Zelda, 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 blah, 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 blah. But... I'm not talking about games alone. I'm talking about the hardware. All right? Sony and Microsoft took the easy route. Whether people want to admit it or not, they took the easy route. PlayStation 3, 4 controller looks exactly the same. Xbox One controller looks exactly the same. Nintendo, they move ahead. They don't stick to the same thing every time. They give you the option, though, to use what you're used to. You know, and then on top of that, to sit there and say that you know so, that that Mario, every Mario is the same, it's not true, or every Zelda is the same, it's not true. Wait, wait, you gotta remember something. Not everybody can innovate, you know, like Crisis Three because they had a crossbow <laughs> and a bow and arrow, and, and, and a, a bow and a bow, you know, and bows. Did I mention it had a bow? 
<laughs> That's innovation, my friends. That and nicer graphics. <laughs> oh, God. oh man. Hey, can I can I tell y'all something real quick? Early uh, the other day, I was looking around on YouTube trying to find some footage of 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 Watch Dogs for the Wii U. I came across yeah. like an eight-second clip where you could tell that it was Wii U footage. Oh. All right. I showed that clip to my dad along with the PS4 footage, but I didn't tell him which was which. He actually said the Wii U footage looked better than the other than the PS4 footage. I need to see this, Nate, because I'm looking forward to that game big time. I will have to find it again, but it was like an eight-second clip, but you could tell it was Wii U because, you know, like how Xbox, it's it's green and red, and then PlayStation, it's got the, the square and triangle and all that. The, yep. the, yeah. This one actually had the black and white uh, characters for to press, and that was, you know, that matched the Wii U control scheme. Yeah, find and, that for me. I want to see that. Oh, I'll find it. And it looked awesome. It looked beautiful. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, when I play my Wii U, I'm like, like games like, uh, you know, most, you know, most wanted you, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 2, especially Splinter Cell Blacklist. Yes, Splinter Cell. I mean, I'm sitting there playing Splinter Cell Blacklist, you know, and I'm like thinking to myself, it can only get a little bit better than this, so who cares? Now, now, there is a lot of people downplaying that, though. Have you have you been seeing uh, what uh, some of the other sites are saying? Oh, I know. I know yeah, what they're, they're saying. They're saying, oh, well, because of this frame rate and that frame rate, but they're not counting the fact that there's there's zero screen tearing. It's always running in VSync. It, it's, it's by default in the SDK. They have to do it that way. So well, it's already doing off, twice the work. Do you really think they fully tapped the Wii U when they made that port? Nope. Not in the slightest. Not in the slightest. And it's it's so, I mean, like Bond in his videos, you know, uh, you know, doing his, you know, not, it's, you know, not very playable or whatever, you know, his, his little routine he likes to do. It's such a joke. Because... I'm sitting there playing the game, and you know, I really want to know what software they use to catch these frame rates because it isn't like a PC that you can install fraps to. Because when I'm playing it, you know, not in the cutscenes, but in the actual gameplay, it feels like it's doing about these 40, 50, 60 frames a second. I'm not noticing no 20, 25, and I know when it goes that low. Here's the thing about Splinter Cell is the frame frame rates only drop when there's a lot of action going on on screen. And the thing is, if you're playing it the way you should be playing Splinter Cell, you're never gonna have anything going on on screen to that extent, unless you're just going and blowing everything to hell. Right. Yeah. That is true. That that is true because I noticed that myself. So yeah, as far as Splinter Cell, yeah, that that game runs beautifully if you're playing it stealthily like it's supposed to. It looks, it runs beautifully in an action scenes. I don't have ever seen any slowdown. I don't. Wow. Do you know what? I was thinking about not getting it at first, but now that everybody's going on and on and on about it, I might just get it. I might just give up and just go, you know what? Let's get her done. Let's Dude, do this you thing. Not the, you will not regret the purchase. And as far as this, I got to get this out real quick because, hey, hey, Manchu, your favorite fan, he put out a video earlier today. Oh God! Uh, he 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 talking about he, he was showing me verse. Evidently, this guy owns a Wii U. I mean, I thought maybe he didn't own one, but uh, evidently he does. And he was showing the Splinter Cell Meverse community, and he's showing how people are you know complaining about not being able to connect to their friends when they get an invite. So I'm gonna just say it now: if you own Splinter Cell Wii U and you have not gone into your router and made your Wii U set up to be in a DMZ, which is demilitarized zone settings, it opens up all the ports. If you do that, you will be able to connect to anybody you want. I wasn't able to connect till I did that. So if people are still having this issue, set it to DMZ. If Until they patch it. That, open uh up the ports. Until they patch it, that is, because let me tell you something right now. Putting it at DMC is not a smart move. That's a very risky thing right there, setting up anything as a DMZ. That's not recommended. That's a last resort because basically that's demilitarized zone. You're putting that thing right there and exposing it. 
And you know how people in this community love to expose things. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'll be quite a few years before somebody can hack into a Wii U remote. True, 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 true enough, but still, I'm just saying. You know, but uh, speaking about the patch, Quan. Yes, sir. You know, I, I find it very funny that, uh, and I was going to approach this on a future video. I can't remember who sent it in to me, but uh, shout out goes to you. You know who you are. But uh, here's the thing. Ubisoft is patching the Vita version of Rayman Legends. The, they had missing levels, and they're patching it right in. Now, this is coming right after this game is released, right? But you have an entire mode, local multiplayer for Splinter Cell is what I'm talking about. And, you know, we could be, we've got no news whether or not you plan to, whether it's on your, your, on your plate, you know, it's in your schedule at all. We've got no word. So, um, you know, I, I find the disparity there kind of funny. But, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. You know, since we're on the topic, let me, let me, break, let me go against that real quick here. Uh, concerning Rayman, because I did pick it up uh, the other day. I've also put about three or four hours into it with my girlfriend playing co-op. That game's co-op is some of the best that I have ever played. And the person that has the, uh, the gamepad can drop in and drop out from Murphy. So, I mean, you're actually cooperatively working through all the Murphy stuff also. And they can just pop into Murphy at any point to help out. It's actually one of the best co-op experiences I've ever had. Oh, okay. Rayman Legends is absolutely the king of the hill. Oh, yeah. And GameSpot, go drag it somewhere. 8.0 versus 9.0. I guess because it has Nintendo Wii U on it. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, I read that. I read that, and that was complete nonsense. They gave, uh, what did they give the PS3 and 360 versions? 9.0. And the Wii U version got an 8, right? Yeah. For no uh, reason other than he says the Murphy, the Murphy levels felt tacked on. That's funny because it was made on Wii U first, you idiot. That, that's just it. The game was made for the Wii U first. So how can something made for something be tacked on? Uh, oh, Lord. Guys, here, we, here we go. It's the conspiracy <laughs> theory. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> there is no theory to it. It's fact. It's fact. In Bond, I got to touch upon you because you made a dumb video. Oh, God, here we go. You're going to summon the, God, the, the goddamn, <laughs> you know, unicycle genie up inside here to haunt to my uh, channel. Thanks for that. Fine, fine, fine. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm going to call ultimate BS. I'm going to do a combo breaker on you, okay? All right, first off, you, uh, can, add, you, breaker. Can, take, you can take third party. No, it's go, 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 combo breaker. That's what it is. Go for it. <laughs> you can take multiple system third-party releases, and some of them don't even add up to a single game release on Nintendo system themselves. Your video about every the third-party rules or third party is the most important, uh, no, it's not. It's important, but it's not the most important because let's be honest here, Bond, what are the top ten most sell, uh, sold games right now on the charts? What all time sold? Who holds the top ten spots? You already know. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't count multi plats across consoles. I, I, me personally, I don't do that for a reason. Because here's the thing: anybody can sell a ton across several platforms. Let me see you sell something on just your own. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And here, here's a pretty sobering statistic for you. You know, Mario Kart on the Wii sold just over 33 million copies. That single game on the single system. Now, if we look at a series like Halo, every single Halo game has barely sold more copies than that one Mario Kart. Every single Halo combined. Mm. Oh. Now that's one hell of an attachment rate on the part of Nintendo, though. <laughs> We're talking about out of every, like what, every three consoles, yeah, one, one of them bought a Mario Kart. Yep. Now that's... you want to know why the attachment rate for third party on Nintendo systems is so bad? Can anybody can can anybody answer that sixty four million dollar question? Short changing the features. Nintendo ones? Uh, it's a quality issue. Nintendo has like a quality stamp that you have to look like quality assurance. They won't release no. a broken game. 
Yeah, see, that's the thing. Third party, if you just release a game that's the full game, not missing things like Activision, and there still hasn't released DLC for Black Ops 2, and it looks like they're not going to release it for Ghost, you know, if you could actually support us Nintendo gamers as well as you support Xbox and Sony, we would buy your product. But we're not gibberish idiots over here. We're not the guy from Goonies. Hey, you guys! All right, Sloth, calm down, calm down. Calm down, Sloth. We're going to sit up here and give it a... We're, we're going to wrap it up right here. <laughs> we're going to wrap it up right here. Somebody give him a candy bar. <laughs> Somebody do the truffle shuffle. That might calm him down. <laughs> oh. All right, no, seriously, though. No. We're going to wrap it up here for now. And uh, everybody give your sign off accordingly. We're going to sit up and start off with Nintendo. Uh, give your sign off, bro. Okay, guys. You know, it's been a pleasure joining you here for the first time. I hope that I'm welcome back. I don't know. You're going to have to ask the bosses. But uh, it, it was fun with you guys. You know, check out my channel. Shameless plug for the win. Nintendo, Zen Gamer. Just type it up. I'm sure you're going to find it. If you love the, st the kind of stuff all of these other guys provide, whether in video form or in uh, typing, then you're probably going to take a liking to my stuff. See you all again. right. Cool. And, well, you already know me. I'm Quan, and I'm just going to make it simple here. Like I always say, whatever's clever. All right, Jay, you're next. All right, man. I hope y'all have a nice evening. I'm going to go get some tacos and some chimichangas. Peace. <laughs> See you Orale pues, he's going to eat that like crazy man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Thumbprint, I mean, uh, Jamie, you're next. All right, my name is Thumbprint, uh, I mean, <laughs> Jamie Butterworth. <laughs> I don't have a YouTube channel, you see me comment around. I do, however, have a book I published back in June, Go Look on Amazon, Super Powered by me, Awesome Work Fiction 299, check it out. But uh, otherwise, have fun, looking forward to the next time. All right, come on. You did it for the Tanuki. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I did it all for the Tanuki. This has been GamerNate78, and as always, just gamers unite. There you go. All right, we're out, everybody, and until next week, as you know, like I said, we're going to be here, and we hope to see you here, too. All right, we're out. <laughs>